Hello fellow travel travelers, it is Carrie, and we have our Tribe Trailer Overland Base Camp. And we've had it for about two years now. We've put a lot of miles on it. We've had some great adventures with it. And I figured, you know, since it's been about two years, it would be a good time to do a, uh, what are the things I love and hate about it? <laughs> because there are certainly some things that we absolutely love. And there's a few things that could stand a little improvement and uh, things that we may do or things that you know other people have done that I'll share with you. But I think we can get started with some of the things that really annoy me about it. One is this handle, this pump handle. It works, it's great. It pumps on the up and on the downswing. You can go through a lot of water very quickly with this. How do you wash your hands? When you're trying to get soap on them and stuff, I would prefer this to be a constant flow of water, uh, a faucet of some kind that I could just turn on and off. And what I may do is just wire this, or not wire it, but plumb it to the water pump that's on the other side. If I can just string a water line over there, turn the water pump on, then I could turn this on and off, wash up, and be just fine. And one of the things that we really like is the power system in here. This thing works really, really well. We've got 110 volt power through a thousand watt inverter, a hundred amp hour battery. It's pre-wired for solar with a connector on the back, a two pin, um, I think it's a two pin aviation uh, connector. Pretty easy to find. Again, 110 power down here, light switch, easy controls, we have our gauge to show how much water is in the tank, and it has a 17 gallon water tank. So quite a bit of water on board. So again, love this, great setup. And if we ever decide we need solar, we just plug them in and we're good to go. Now, again, on our list of things that we love, and one of the main reasons we got this trailer was storage. There is a ton of storage on here. We've got cubbies, we got shelves. Again, cubby space, shelf, and I'll show you stuff on the other side. We have a big storage container on top, and on the back there is storage that goes almost the whole length of the trailer. So this was a big deciding factor in choosing a trailer. When we're looking at teardrops and square drops and things, it's like, well, where do you put all your stuff? Like, they just didn't have a lot of storage on them. And so a lot of the stuff you're going to have to deal with every time you stop, your chairs, your tables and things, all have to be in the trailer. And then you have to take them out before you can get into sleep. This, not a problem, because we have the Alpha tent on here. And this is a great rooftop tent. We absolutely love this thing. It's like a California king-size mattress. There is a ton ton of room in this thing and when it's folded out there's LEDs on the bottom there's LEDs inside super super cool so the tent was another big reason so we have our living space separate from our storage which is what you don't really have when you get a normal teardrop or square drop now here on the back we have our pull out with this all the storage in here you could normally put a refrigerator in here. We keep ours in the Jeep for other reasons. We've got power outlets, light switches, a fan to help keep some of the heat out of here. And then on the bottom, it has a standard two inch receiver. So you could easily add a bike rack. It's got shackles on here in case you need to do any recovery with it. And again, the, the backside here of this large shelf this is great. We keep tables in here, our privacy tent. You could keep solar panels in here, no problem. Uh, lots of good storage options there. On this side, we have our pull-out kitchen. It has a two burner stove and a sink with running water. Up here, we have a switch for our water pump and a light switch to turn the light on over here. And again, more storage. So having the kitchen, just be able to pull out, be ready to go, including a 20 pound 
propane tank, which will typically last us an entire season. So easy food prep. Another table pulls out from here, gives you additional prep space, lots of room to work. And then this gets all put away. Now, one of the things that allows us to take the trailer into all kinds of different conditions, different terrain, some rough territory is this articulating hitch. It will spin um, pretty far in left to right position, I mean, until it hits the Jeep, or rotate 360 degrees. This gives us a tremendous amount of articulation with the system being able to take it over extremely, extremely rough terrain. So this is the key to the whole thing being extremely off-road capable. We're gonna take a quick look at the suspension because again, Another thing that I absolutely love about this is it has some really, really beefy suspension and it's independent suspension. There's no axle going across, giving it a ton of flexibility and articulation when off-roading it. It also has electric brakes that you can fine tune if you have a brake controller. Now ours also came with a Tough Stuff Overland awning. We've used this a couple times. Pretty nice, pretty easy to set up. Definitely worthwhile to have out in the desert when it is blistering hot. Next up on my annoyances list here, there is not a USB port on this entire trailer. You have three 110 outlets here and you have two 12 volt outlets in the back. That's it. For all this power, making this power useful can actually be a little tricky. So I'll show you one of the things that I did to improve that. Um, now, most inverters have USB ports on them. This particular inverter does not. So if I ever change this to something else, I'll be making sure that it has USB ports on it, or I'm going to wire in some USB ports to have them accessible here for charging phones, for charging batteries, things like that. But the fact that there's not a single one on here is kind of interesting because the tent, these LEDs run off USB and yet there's no place to plug them in. Now, two things that I've done to rectify the lack of USB ports is I replaced one of the 12 volt ports here with a, a USB socket. It has a OC 3.0 USB-A and it has a USB-C power delivery port on there. So that gave me two USB ports. Then when I'm in the trailer, I have to use a CPAP machine. So I can plug it into the 12 volt port here, but then if it's really cold, we also have a 12 volt blanket, which also needs a 12 volt port. So what I did, I hooked this up, I can plug into here, and then I have this uh, Ugizmo <laughs> adapter here, which gives me USB-C and USB-A on the top, USB-A two ports on the front, and three 12 volt outlets here. So I can plug in my CPAP machine, our electric blanket, and if I needed something else, I could, as well as providing additional USB ports for the LEDs or other strip lights that we have, or if we need to charge phones or batteries of some kind, that's our solution right there. Now, as much as I love all the storage that's on here, this one is one that bothers me. While we do keep things in here, we have two different tables, we have our privacy tent, and um, often whatever else we can fit in here, usually barbecue equipment or whatever, there is no way to lock this one. There's locks on everything else, but there's no way to lock this drawer. Now, I've used a little chain on here before, which if you had a basic screwdriver, you could pop that off easily. But there really should have been something on here to stop that and uh, make this lockable. So keep that in mind that if you're going to put anything expensive in here, you're going to need to fabricate some way of locking this. Now the tent I mentioned is a Tough Stuff Overland Alpha. And while we absolutely love this setup, 
there is a very common problem with this tent, and that is the rear corners cracking. And it just happens to just about everybody, and ours happened at 13 months, so it was a month out of warranty, and this is an $800 replacement for the shell. So it's probably not something I'm going to bother replacing. I'm going to deal with it as best I can for a while, then eventually during an off season, I'll pull it off, I'll maybe fiberglass reinforce it, I'll do something to fix the problem, but that is an issue for a lot of people, as well as the clear coat on here going bad. Now, we keep ours garaged when it's not being used. I think we're not gonna have the problem with the clear coat, but the corners, that was definitely a problem. Now, kind of one of the, the final things on my list here, I mean, it's, Again, and for the most part, I'm being pretty nitpicky. The, the tent issue, that's tough stuff overland. That's not a tribe trailer thing. Um, but there really wasn't good ways of mounting stuff to the outside, whether it be a shower system or roto packs or anything like that. And so I've had to fabricate some pieces to, to go across and, and make do, which I guess is what you would expect when you're trying to add something that they didn't think of. But having some system from Tribe Trailer to enable you to mount stuff easier, to me, that would have been a big win. You know, other options that I would like to see in this big center console, I'd love to see from the factory option of a hot water heater in here for showers. I think that'd be great. Uh, on the front, and I'll show you that in just a sec. Let's back up here. Tongue storage is an issue for a lot of people. You want more storage. And on our bigger adventures, we do carry 10 extra, or I think these are seven, so like 14 extra gallons of water. And in order to mount them on here, they're sitting on max tracks recovery boards that are ratchet strapped down. It works, and I'll probably come up with a more elegant solution over time. But again, something from Tribe Trailer to solve this type of a mounting solution that was more custom fit, designed for it, that you didn't have to kind of jury rig to make work, I think would be a great option. Okay, so that is our tribe trailer after two years. Um, there are spots right here to be able to put two five gallon jerry cans. So when we're on big long excursions, we can carry lots of extra fuel. So that's a big plus. The question is, if we had to start over, would we buy it again or would we buy something else? And the short answer is we'd do it again. This is an awesome trailer. It is built like a tank for all the little things that kind of annoy us about it. Most of them are fairly easable, easy to work around. There, there are no show stoppers on here. The USB ports, okay, that was an easy fix. The, you know, changing out the water spout when it broke, easy fix. Will I replace it with something else? Probably, maybe, maybe I'll get around to it. You know, there, so some of the things we'll probably just end up living with. Others will continue to enhance and improve over time. I've got a mount here where I have a water port uh, shower system on there. We're gonna come up with ways of mounting other things on here that'll make stuff nice. There's little issues with some of the, um, this coating, this Linex type stuff peeling in a couple spots. Again, easy to fix up, easy to, to work around. After two years, there's little things that you're gonna expect and dealing with them, just not that big of a deal. For the price point of a trailer like this with the capabilities, the hitch, the suspension, this fits what we do perfectly. Is it the perfect trailer for everybody? No, it's not going to be. Rooftop tents are not for everybody. You have to get up, you have to crawl up inside. If you have a heavy dog, that's gonna be a pain to get in there. there. You know, a tent isn't insulated. So if you're in the cold or you're in the heat, you're in the cold or the heat. There's no way around it. You can do things like diesel heaters to, to heat them up. You can get things like a zero breeze to, to try and cool them off, but they're not gonna hold that temperature because they're not insulated like you can do on a hard shell teardrop or square drop. So we love it. 
we would do it again. <laughs> we love Tribe Trailer. The guys over there are really awesome to work with. And, you know, maybe they'll watch this and go, okay, maybe we can improve a couple of those things, especially like the USB ports. To me, that's a biggie. Everybody has USB devices. You should be able to charge them on here. Pretty simple. So, all that being said, we love our Tribe Trailer, even with the little things that kind of annoy us. There's the things that we absolutely love, the things that annoy us. What has actually broken or gone bad on this in the two years that we've had it, putting 20,000 miles on it, hauling it over extremely rough terrain, doing things on it that most people are never going to do. Well, the hand pump has been replaced once. So that was kind of a pain. They sent me another one. This exact one on, e on uh, Amazon is like 14 bucks. So it's cheap, easy to replace, not a big deal. The only other issue that we've had is while we were in Wyoming on some extremely rough terrain, the spare tire winch that pulls it up into place broke. The, the piece that connects the hook to hold the tire in place bent and it dropped the, the tire. We didn't know that until later, so we actually lost our spare tire as well as the mount. Tribe Trailer took care of us on that, so I'm very happy that they dealt with it as kind of a warranty issue and helped us get all those things back in place again. So wasn't a major ordeal in the end. Some of the drawers, I would say you need to be careful when pulling the drawers out. You can actually pull them out too far and then they pull off the rails and in putting them back in, I actually broke one of the rails and had to get a replacement. So that was on me for not being careful enough. You do want to go through on a regular basis and tighten down all the bolts. If you are treating it like we do, things are going to loosen up over time. So a little thread lock, a little torquing is going to keep you in good shape. Now, along with breaking the rear or the spare tire mount, we also totally destroyed the shocks on that trip. Um, the, at the end, they were just, they were, there was nothing left of them. And so we actually upgraded to some Bill Steins, and that was probably a $200 upgrade. And now this thing has amazing shocks on it. So hand pump, the crack on the tent, which not, again, not a tribe trailer issue. That's a tough stuff overland thing. The spare tire mount, losing the spare tire, and the shocks. Those are the problems that we've had over the, uh, like I said, over 20,000 miles of driving this on extremely difficult terrain. So all that being said, I think we've done pretty well. The question is, would we buy it again? Absolutely. This fits our lifestyle perfectly. Being able to hook up and just go and go pretty much anywhere that we want to go to go camping, we can take this. Can you take it on level six, seven, eight trails? Probably not. You just don't have the breakover angle with the, the hitch system. You know, you're, you're gonna be limited by certain types of angles when you're trying to climb and having a trailer behind you. That said, most anywhere that you can go camping, you can get this thing to quite easily. So that's it. This is our Tribe Trailer Base Camp Overland. We absolutely love it. We highly recommend it everywhere we go. People ask us about it. And that's the things we like, the things we don't like, the things that we've had to deal with, in terms of breakages and hopefully this helps you to make a decision whether you'd be interested in a tribe trailer overland base camp for yourself i highly recommend it thanks for watching this has been carrie and katarina with trail traveler be safe out there we'll see you on the trails